Hey, what's up, guys? It's LEGO Hobo 910 here with another LEGO video. And in this video, I'm reviewing set number 75261, the Star Wars 20th Anniversary Edition Clone Scout Walker. So let's get right into the review. So first, we're going to look at this here, which is a little stand for the 20th Anniversary figure that comes in this set. Every set comes with one of these 20th Anniversary figures, which we'll look at later. But he's on this little platform here which is pretty simply built, and then it has a print there that says 20 years LEGO Star Wars 1999 to 2019, and then this one says Darth Vader as the minifig that comes with this is Darth Vader. It, that's the only thing different between these stands on each of the minifigs. They also come with a 2x4 uh, plate here, so you can clip it under there, and then if you have others, you can just clip them on there. I'm pretty sure you can imagine how that works. And this is a fairly simple stand, but I really like it as it provides some way to display them, and it looks pretty cool. Like I said, we're going to look at that minifig a bit closer later, though. Let's go look at some of the other small builds. This set has two small side builds here. The dwarf spider droid, which we'll look at in a second. And then this little uh, Wookiee gun emplacement. It's kind of like a little wall, except it's not really big enough to be a wall. As you can see, it's only uh, a brick and a plate tall. And it's just some of these rock or claw pieces connected with some hinges, so you can hinge it around and change the shape if you want it to just be a flat wall if you want it to, you know, be really curved. In fact, you can make it, you know, curve all the way around if you want. Uh, I prefer just like a half circle, uh, but then also if you get multiple of these, you know, you can curve them into a nice little encampment. So it works pretty well here. And then there's this gun mount, which uses the large Star Wars uh, gun piece, and then can be rotated at the base. This little gun shield can also be rotated as well. And then the gun can spin side to side. And obviously the Wookiee cannot actually grab it as the handle is what's used to connect it there. Uh, so you could just kind of have them imagine that they're holding it like that. And it just provides a little more for the Wookiee to do and helps him feel more in place. So now let's look at the spider droid for the Separatists here. So this is a pretty simple build. Except it looks like the source material and does what it's supposed to as well as add a bit more to the Separatist side so it's a bit more of a balanced battle. It has four legs, each with three points of rotation up by the body, and I just broke it, oops, um, at the center and then at kind of the ankle. And I like the use of the droid body that adds a bit more texture. And then also I like the clear piece here. It helps support it a bit so it's not just relying on support for the legs. Though it is a bit annoying if you want to get it in some different rocking, walking positions sometimes. It's also very helpful, so that way you can just set it down and then kind of just push all the legs down to get it stable, and it works pretty well there. And then you use this same combination of pieces here that's used on spider droids a lot, and then a little fencing sword as the antenna, and of course that can be rotated around to get different angles and different looks if you want. Then the eyes are connected with a foam piece and a droid arm here, so they do have two points of rotation if you do want to rotate them, obviously they just look best up by the head. And then its gun is a stud gun, which I think they should have just, you know, had to be a static thing that, or excuse me, something that just doesn't shoot. Because this definitely doesn't look as good as, you know, just like a uh, bar would, like what they've done on previous spider droids. It works, and it does add a bit more play, but it just doesn't look as good. It can be rotated around, though. But it is fairly easy to switch something out if you want. As you can just pop that off, and you have this whole base to work off of. Or you can even just pop that off and use your own ball joint pieces there. So if you really, really can't stand it, uh, and you want to modify it, it is fairly easy to do so. But overall, I think this is a neat little build just to help kind of balance out the set. Here is the main build of the set, the Clone Scout Walker. And this is supposed to be an ATRT, which is seen all throughout the Clone Wars, as well as in Episode 2 and 3. Uh, this one with this uh, particular paint scheme in the Battle of Kashyyyk. And this is a great set to add to the ATAP and the droid gunship that came out in the last Star Wars wave. And with all the 20th anniversary, like with all the 20th anniversary sets, it's based off of an older set. Here's the original Clone Scout Walker from 2005, and I do not own this one myself, so I can't do a comparison. But that's what that one looks like. And as you can see, this is definitely an update. It has a lot cleaner angles, and I also like the kind of cockpit section up here. That definitely looks a lot smoother and nicer. Though, uh, as this is an ATRT, this is really oversized. I'd say a good size for an ATRT is about that. As you can see, this is quite a lot bigger. ATRTs are fairly small vehicles. They've done a good job in uh, 
some of the other sets, like in the, uh, I believe, 2015 Clone Turbo Tank, there's a small one. And also, uh, I feel like the custom ATRT I made is a fairly decent size, but this is really oversized. It does look good, though, and obviously you can imagine it as being something other than just an ATRT. And it has a few points of uh, positioning on the legs. There's one up there, one at the knees, one at the ankle. And then also the toes can be moved, which is helpful to balance them. Sadly, this is as far forward as they can go. So you can't, like, have them, you know, kind of really jumping forward. But I think it's fine, because most of the time when they're running, they just have their feet far back. And it is fairly easy to get into a running position here. Uh, I was able to do it a lot easier. There we go, there's just a simple one. If you, you just put it one click back, it does kind of lean to the side, though, but it looks... It, fairly accurate as when they run they do kind of totter side to side. Earlier I was able to get it into a farther back position. I'm struggling to get that one now though. But yeah, I was able to get it earlier. Mm, I don't know, I had like the top one like two clicks back or something. Some, I was able to do something like that, so you can get them into more walking poses, just as a bit difficult. So for the most part, I just have it standing like this, or one leg back. Just a little bit. Maybe I can even... There you go, I can push it a bit there. And get it like that, which is a pretty good pose. And it looks really fast like that. And the poseable toes definitely help with the balancing of that. I do like the leg design. And also, uh, all those dishes there to look kind of like the movement points. I also like the dark tan and sand green color scheme, especially the area kind of by the knees there. The way it goes across looks pretty good. And they also have these kind of fake little linkages here just to add a bit of detail. They aren't actually connected at the bottom. They are on either side. I wish it would have maybe not used the blue pin there because it does really stand out and look kind of ugly and not fit with the color scheme. I like the grill plates back here, which, uh look pretty nice. They also have some clips up there which don't really do anything. But they just add a bit of texture. Then there are two antennas here which are really large. One of them being a small antenna piece and the other being large. And you can rotate it if you want. There's really no need. That's just kind of the way they're attached though. And then here's the cockpit which just has uh, some handlebars which of course can be rotated. And then this main area here can also be opened up quite a bit which helps to get them in especially, the, these I really don't ever move, but leaning this forward is really helpful to get them in or when I accidentally break off that handlebar piece because I do that a lot. I also like how they use these kind of wing pieces to get that angle. The set does have these two stickers here, and that's it for stickers in the entire set, so it's a pretty fair amount of stickers for a set this size. And overall, I really like this thing and think it's pretty cool. Also, forgot to mention here that the gun can rotate like this. That's all sadly it can't turn down though. As you can see it can't even really hit the spider drone unless you physically lean the thing over. So I wish they would have had a bit more movement in this other than just side to side. And then it has a stud gun on the bottom so you can actually shoot projectiles. So here are the three minifigs other than the 20th anniversary minifig. Uh, and we'll look at that in a second. So here are the other three minifigs that come in this set. The kind of three standard ones. We have a Kashyyyk Trooper a just uh, random Wookiee warrior, and then a battle droid. We'll start by looking at the Kashyyyk Trooper. This is the same one that came in the ATAP, uh, which is slightly different from the previous ones, just because of a bit of tan printing down there on the legs. Uh, it doesn't look any worse though, even though, you know, I already have one, I still really like them. Uh, I like the camo pattern there. It's very kind of intricate printing, as well as all the little details around the belt there. I do wish the legs were maybe dual molded or something to help kind of that color transition around the sides as it does look a bit funky. And then that excellent camel pattern continues around to the back and on the helmet. He just has a standard uh, sized blaster. And then if I take off his helmet, you know, it's just standard clone head with no dual face like always. So now let's move on to the Wookiee Warrior. This is just generic Wookiee Warrior. It's not Chewbacca or Tarfuls or anybody. It's just 
Wookie Warrior. Uh, he doesn't have the bandolier like Chewbacca, and also his face printing is a bit different than Chewbacca's. His is much more kind of full around there. His is has more is more spotty and kind of has a bunch of lines. And then he just has the standard musket for uh, the guns, which is what they've been using for Wookie guns for basically ever. There, we're gonna remove that though because it's a bit in the way. There is a bit of printing on the legs there, which just kind of has that same lighter tan color on it. No printing around the back. And then if we pop that off, of course, it's just a plain torso, but that doesn't matter since this is going to be on it all the time. He's fairly simple, but I think it's a nice inclusion instead of, you know, just throwing in another Chewbacca. It was good to just get a random Wookiee. And then, finally, a battle droid, just, you know, standard battle droid, which is a very, very common minifigure, except that doesn't make them any worse. You can never have too many of them. He just comes with, of course, the standard blast, you know, as normal arm rotation, head rotation, and leg rotation, like all battle droids. Uh, but like I said, you can never get too many of them. I wish maybe they would have included one of those, another one of those Kashyyyk battle troopers from the, you know, excuse me, uh, Kashyyyk battle droids from the previous wave, because those were really cool and only came in the two sets. And I would definitely like more of them. But I'm fine with just the plain battle droid. So here's the 20th anniversary set. Uh, if we look on the back of the box here, you can see each set comes with a special 20th anniversary minifig. We already looked at the stand for that earlier. Uh, this one comes with Vader here. And this is an exact replica of the, uh, the original Darth Vader. So I think he looks pretty sick. Uh, they did use, of course, the old helmet mold, which is different from our most recent one. I believe this is the uh, first, and the one we currently have is the third version uh, there, cause I'm pretty sure there was a second in there, but I'm not quite sure on that. The printing on the torso is, of course, simple as, you know, it is a replica of the original, and then he just has the lightsaber, and as with all the other minifigs that come with, the 20th anniversary minifigs that come with lightsabers, they didn't go back to the original chrome, they still just have their normal silver, because original lightsaber handles were chrome, but they stopped doing that because the paint chipped really easily. He then, of course, has his cape. If I fold that up, you can see the, uh... 20th anniversary print there, just as uh, 20 years Lego Star Wars. And I know a lot of people really hate those prints as they are kind of giant, uh, but the, the people who hate them also understand the need of them being there, so that way, you know, people can't just pass these off and sell them as originals and make the originals lose all value. So, I'm glad they included them. Uh, I do wish they were a bit smaller or something, but it looks fine, especially on uh, ones like Vader here, who has a cape where you won't be able to see it anyway. Then here's his head underneath, which is of course the same as the original one, uh, just the gray with all the kind of scar markings on it. Overall, I think this is a pretty good set. The 20th anniversary minifig and stand, of course, being great. I like all of them. They're pretty neat. The spider droid is a nice inclusion as well, as it does balance out the battle a bit. Obviously, it is you know still pretty heavily leaning towards the. Uh, Republic side, but I do like that they had the thought to include it. The stud gun, uh, definitely, I don't really like the way it looks. I'm fine with stud guns if they're, uh, integrated well or don't really stand out too much on a build, but this one is really big and kind of obnoxious. Uh, but overall, I think the rest of the build is pretty good. The Wookiee encampment here is pretty nice as well, uh, so that way you have kind of more of a reason for the Wookiee to be in this set. And it's just a nice little simple inclusion. And then even though the ATRT is oversized, uh, I still really like it. My biggest complaint is the fact that uh, the gun's fairly limited in movement as it can only go side to side. But overall, I think this looks pretty cool. Uh, I especially like the color scheme on it. And I think the minifig selection is good, getting another one of these guys, as they don't come in that many sets. The Wookiee Warrior being a nice inclusion instead of, you know, just giving us another Chewbacca, just having a random Wookiee. I think they could have done something more interesting with it, like, you know, giving it some type of bandoliers or something. But then again, that might make it easy to confuse with Chewbacca. So I think he's a good in inclusion. And then the battle droid, of course. So that way, you know, you have somebody for them to fight against. And you can just never have too many battle droids. And also, if you look at the price per part, this is 30 bucks for 250 pieces. So the price per part really isn't that good, but if we look at just the amount of stuff here... I think 30 bucks is a pretty good price for it, uh, because this, I feel like, by itself is, you know, like, maybe 20 bucks, and then 
this feels like maybe five, this five, and then, I don't know, just overall I feel like 30 bucks is a pretty good value for this. But that's all for now, and bye.